Thank you, respected chairpersons, uh, my dear colleagues. So instant restenosis, if we look at the study from US, we can see that it, it happens by 10% of total PCI in the last eight years of US study. And in, from Europe, from France study, we have seen that it uh, left men, um, the ISR PCI uh, approximately 7% of total PCI numbers in Europe. And this remains still remains the um, preferred modality of treatment and definitely the outcome of ISR PCI in terms of target lesion revascularization is worse than non, non ISR PCIs. Coming to the angiographic classification of uh, ISR, ISR you can basically classify into two types. One is focal and another is diffuse. Type one covers the focal types of restenosis, whereas type two, three, and four covers the diffuse type of restenosis. And diffuse restenosis usually results in more target lesion revascularization either by PCI or cabbage. And current classification of uh, ISR, the etiological classification covers the mechanical issues, the under expansion and strain fracture, biologic issues like instant hyperplasia, neoarthrosclerosis without calcification, and neoarthrosclerosis with calcification, mixed pattern, chronic total occlusion, and more than two, two layers of stent involvement. And according to the classification, the treatment options may differ. From human autopsy studies of drug eluting stents, it, can, it has been found that two factors are very important in multivariate analysis. That is the number of stents. The number of stents is used, total length of the stent, stented segment and the minimum interstart distance, the maximal interstart distance, those are the two factors which uh, can predict the rate of restenosis in future. Other factors also include the medial injury by strain struts, the, the number of inflammatory cells around the strain struts and lipid core penetration by strain struts. So after the development of DS, uh, DES, we thought that we have tackled restenosis, but we are already two steps back because with DES implantation, the new atherosclerosis has been found to be earlier and more severe compared to BMS. Whereas in BMS, the new atherosclerosis is usually absent before two years and almost low, very low uh, before four years. Uh, and in case of serolimus eluting stent, new atherosclerosis is found at as early as nine months. Another important factor in late, late state restenosis is strain strut fracture. It, it is important to identify when we treat such lesions. Coming to the image or imaging, OCT is very helpful, not only to diagnose the pattern of restenosis, but also the optimize for optimization of uh, ISR PCI. We can see the homogeneous bright uniform layer, which corresponds to neointimal hyperplasia. When there's a heterogeneous composition with instant necrotic core, it, 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 it actually, uh, uh, predicts to new atherosclerosis and stent under expansion can be clearly uh, identified by OCT. Looking at early versus late instant restenosis, the study shows that in the second generation drug eluting stent, the patients who had early ISR, less than one year ISR, main culprit was the minimal luminal uh, stent area, minimal stent area was less. And patients who had uh, more than one year of duration after uh, strain implantation, mostly culprit was neointimal hyperplasia. So these are the two factors, early strain restenosis. So suboptimal stenting is the most uh, common cause and late strain restenosis, neointimal hyperplasia or neurothrosclerosis is the likely cause. The focused update of ESC from 2017 has identified from some high risk factors, prior strain thrombosis, stenting the only remaining patent coronary artery, diffuse multi-cell disease, specifically in diabetic patients, chronic kidney disease, at least three stent implanted, at least three lesions treated, bifurcation with two stents, total stent length more than 60 millimeter and treatment of a chronic total occlusion. So all factors which can give rise to ISR. Imaging has, as we, as we have told, it's a very a various roles in managing ISR. It can, uh, detect the age, detect, age dissection, neointimal hyperplasia, neoatherosclerosis, late acquired malapposition, under expansion, and stent crush. And imaging should be uh, 
basic, the, the class one indication for ISR uh, strict PCI. Based on OCD appearance, ISR can be classified into four groups, homogeneous, where it's uniform high signal density, low black backscatter, typical areas of high smoothness of muscle cell content. This is mainly uh, characteristics of neointimal hyperplasia, heterogeneous, mixed signal density, may represent presence of proteoglycan rich neomintima or neoatherosclerotic plaque. Heterogeneous and layered are the two classifications which are mostly found in this restenosis. And comparing bare metal and drug looting strain restenosis, you can see uh, diffuse pattern of restenosis is more common with BMS, whereas focal pattern is more common with DES. And time course of late clomelin loss, late loss is maximum by six to eight months in case of BMS, whereas Ongoing leg loss may occur even after four to, four to five years after implantation of this. And neoatherosclerosis is relatively infrequent or late in bare metal stains, whereas it is very frequent and accelerated course in case of this. So factors considering when performing an ISR PCI, you have to identify the stain factors. You have to identify the intra-stain factors like neointimal hyperplasia, neoatherosclerosis, presence of calcium or thrombus, uh, hetero or homogeneous tissue, focal or diffuse pattern, and extra strain factors include multiple strain layers, vessel calcification, calcified nodule, vessel size, and residual plaque burden. Different studies involving the balloon angioplasty, bare metal stains, intravascular brachytherapy, rotablation, cutting scoring balloon, drug eluting stains, and drug eluting balloons have, have been performed uh, in this subject. And what are the essence of these studies? Specifically, it has been found compared to balloon angioplasty. If you do angioplasty with either drug eluting stent or drug coated balloon, it gives better result. And compared to plain drug coated balloon use, if you use prior scoring balloon before applying drug coated balloon, it gives even better result. And comparing DCB to this, it gives comparable results. And DCB is by no means inferior to this in treatment of instant restenosis. So basically the principle is to, be, uh, to treat the ISR lesion, you first define the lesion, identify the culprit lesion, assess the lesion length and severity using orthogonal projection, use IVI liberally, prepare the lesion properly, routinely predilate all the lesions, use high pressure cutting scoring balloon, address all the mechanical factors and ultimately treat with, in case of DES ISR, you can use another DES or DCB. In BMS however, DCB is preferred choice or you can use another DES and assess, finally assess your result with IVI. So this is a, a case of 61 year old gentleman with diabetic hypertensive with stable angina and long segment disease, calcified disease in the LAD, it was rotablated with a 1.75 rotab bar and we achieved a good final result. But the patient came back after two years with symptoms and we found a focal restenosis in the distal part of the LED, you can appreciate the hinge motion there. And after proper stent boost, we found the stent fracture. So that is, that is the mechanical cause of instant restenosis. This patient ultimately went for bypass. The second case, the 62 year old lady, diabetic, ACS PCI in another hospital, he presented after three months with STEMI and ECO showed hypokinetic IVS. And this is the angiogram. You can see the proximal part of the LED stent. There's a lesion. And uh, probably there is an under expansion of the stent or undersizing of the stent. So we did an IVAS, and definitely we found the proximal area of the stent is definitely uh, has very low minimal luminal area. So we predilated that stent with a score flex balloon of 3.5 into 10 and applied a cerulimus eluting balloon 3.5 into 35 and had a good result. The patient is doing well. The third case is a 56 year old gentleman, diabetic hypertensive, guilty of history of multiple PCI, presented again in May, May 2017 with angina, with normal LV function, his LAD and circumflex stents are patent, but there was disease in the RCA stent and distal part of the native RCA. So at that time, imaging was not done. Two long epirolimus saluting stents were put in, in the RCA overlapping the first stent. The final result was good, acceptable, but after one year, the patient again became symptomatic and it developed multiple focal restenosis. You can see the long length of stents here. So that was the cause here. 
we didn't, I was here, but unfortunately I don't have the image. Uh, we went to the high pressure scoring dilatation in the throughout the stented segment and ultimately give drag eluting balloons here, two drag eluting balloons of three and 3.5 were used and we achieved a good result. The patient was doing well until four years, again came back in August, 2022. This time there was again some disease in the focal part, focal lesion in the middle of the RCA, again, another restenosis. And we did a high pressure dilatation with the NC flex and put another cerulema saluting long stent in the proximal part of RCA. But after putting the stent, you can see the stent is under expanded in the middle portion still now. So I was showed there was multiple stent layers and some focal calcifications there. So we post dilated at 3.5 into 826 atmosphere pressure. The balloon now nicely opens and we had a good final result confirmed by IVAS. So my take home message is ISR accounts for five to 10% of all PCI and new generation days have relatively reduced the, risk of, uh, the rate of ISR. Increasing procedural volume and complexity of lesions result in higher absolute number of ISR in the modern era. In majority of cases, deaths or DCB remains the treatment of choice and IVI provide useful information to guide the treatment. Thank you for patient here.